Okay, thanks for checking out the podcast. There's something wrong with me today. I don't agree before I say why. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I woke up today, came to work, and I'm like, something stinks. No, what? And it ended up being my feet. And here's why. For some weird reason, I didn't change my socks. Well, you wore your socks to bed, you said? Yeah, so I, I was cold last night. So I wore my socks that I was wearing all day to bed. Woke up this morning, didn't change them, still wearing them right now. Ew, ew, ew. Here's what you need to um, do is have bed socks. What are those? Well, you can't be jumping into bed in the socks you've worn all day. Anyway, your bed's going to stink. You got really rank feet. Excuse you? So I would (laughs) have a separate bedroom sock that's like really warm. There's a lot of people listening right now that are probably like, ew, people that wear socks to bed in general are gross to begin with. But I'm one of those freaks. You wear the dirty socks that you have off your feet on your hands as well. (laughs) to bed she's just a real weirdo (laughs) anyway enjoy the podcast today thank you for checking it out don't forget to uh give us a five-star review if you believe it please maybe even a comment get some more traction on this old pcast i promise i'll change my socks tomorrow well no i'll change them today please and then uh, yeah okay both pairs the hand i don't wear socks on my hands this is the Ryder and Lisa replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. I think uh, most parents or even aunts and uncles, uh, caregivers have been in the car with a kid and asked them, like, how did uh, school go today? Good. Good. What'd you learn? No, 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 no not no. much. Okay. And then you move on. And then to you like, move on. What's for dinner or yeah. whatever? Um, you don't really like dive in. And kids have so much that, in my opinion, must be confusing about the world, especially right now. Because they're like, why am I learning all this? What is going to happen in my future? Why is everybody so worried about 2020? And like, there are just a lot of things that kids maybe don't have access to answering themselves. They They lean on the important adults in their life Mm -hmm. to, you know, make comfortable conversations a reality. So my brother, I asked him about this. And your brother is a genius for the record. He is a, what is his job title? Leadership development coach. Yeah. He, uh, he runs the Roy group, which is like a really powerful leadership tool for companies. I've taken it just because I was curious what it was all about. And it was fantastic. Like so beneficial for companies to use Mm. that, to make their managers more, first of all, likable, in a workspace. Sure. And then more things to learn from there. Well, and I think having important conversations with your employees would yes. be a similar thing. But uh, his tip for firing up a good conversation with a kid was what's the best thing about your world these days? And what's the trickiest thing about your world these days? So, like, what's the best thing about being Charlie? That's what I asked her yesterday when we were driving. Okay, and what was her it answer? It was just like a really beautiful answer about uh, that she feels safe and uh-huh. uh, that she feels very loved. And then like the next time I pick her up, I'll say trickiest and we have a good conversation about what's just weighing on her. Anyway, I just thought it was a really cool way. Instead of what you learn in school today or... Or how are you? Because it's so easy to just say good. We yeah. have it built in us For sure. to just say good and move on yeah. when asked how we are. But when you ask it in a different way, you may get a cool response from, from a kid and I end up having a pretty powerful conversation. That's really fascinating. I think everyone listening should take that kind of as, ironically, homework mm-hmm. and try that with your children yeah, or your loved back. ones. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> 107. Thank you for checking out the show. You had a cool experience shakedown yesterday. Yeah, and I thought it was a great reminder to keep supporting local, especially Edmonton-based companies and small businesses. Keep them afloat, yep. I got a DM on Instagram the other day from the owners of Doan's Vietnamese Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now, they unfortunately have shut down. They have two locations, had, sorry, two locations here in Edmonton. Best chicken curry soup ever. Would always win best soup in the city every year there was ever a contest for it. It really is incredible soup. Anyway, Lone wrote me from the Don's account saying, hey, I just made a big batch of chicken curry soup at home, and I know how much you love it because she's probably heard me talk about Mm -hmm. it on air. And she said, I'm going to leave some out 
um, my front doorstep for you if you'd like to come by and pick it up. I was like, Amazing. what? Yeah. I haven't tasted that broth in probably over nine months now. So I went over there to pick it up. Just a sweet gesture. Totally. And it just made me really sad and Mm -hmm. disheartened to know that there's a lot of struggling small business owners that have big hearts, that care about their clients and their customers. And they put money back in the community. Exactly. Jeff Bezos is not (laughs) paving the roads in the city. So it... There, there were so many people that messaged me because I posted this on my Instagram and just reminded people to support local. And I had women reaching out to me saying, I will pay you $100 for that broth. Yeah, I need the address because I'm just going to go and wait in that neighborhood to see if they give anybody else that offer and then just steal that soup. Maybe you've already seen this story. It was circulating on Facebook yesterday out of Calgary. Someone wrote, I just came out of the Safeway on 11th Ave where they called the police on someone who was shoplifting. When they got there, instead of arresting the man, the officer took time to grocery shop a full three bags of food with the guy and paid for the whole thing. It was one of the most incredible things I've ever witnessed. I ran out to his police truck to thank him for his incredible selfless act, but feel he deserves a higher recognition. Events like this make me believe that we have moved in the right direction in Calgary. Snapped a photo of his truck number B141. So I'm sure people in Calgary have figured out who this police officer is. Mm -hmm. And are thanking them. I'm not sure who they are, but what an incredible story. Tell me something good. Shout out to Eric, the parrot from Brisbane, Australia. Wow, what a great name for a parrot. Anton Nguyen was woken by his bird yelling his name over and over again, which is rare. He doesn't nor- Eric doesn't normally do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, he realized upon waking up after hearing the bird that there was smoke billowing into his <gasps> room. His house was fully engulfed in a blazing fire. He managed to escape with Eric, and they're both safe thanks to this bird. Give him a cracker. Tell me something good. As far as new numbers in the province, 550 new cases yesterday. Some experts were expecting us to be at around 1,000 per day in Alberta. So 515 still a lot. Not as bad as we thought we would be at this point this week. I have to just be very clear that, like, no need to celebrate by right. getting together with your friends. But it is nice to see that the numbers aren't at that 1,000 or anywhere near it at this point. I miss my friends. Here in Edmonton, the speed limit has dropped from 50 kilometers an hour to 40 kilometers an hour in most neighborhoods and high pedestrian areas. There's going to be 1,500 signs placed around the community, and it will apply to about 400 neighborhoods. Here, I'll do it. 1,500 signs, no problem. I'll laminate 1,500 signs for $200. Okay. Save us a lot of money. You'd be four in and be like, I don't like this game. Also, one time when I used to manage a bar, I tried to use the laminator to put up a fun, quirky sign in the back room. And then I broke the laminator and then hid it from the general manager for the rest of my time working Mm. there. Does he know that? No. Okay. It's time for the nostalgia off where we both come up with a list of five things. And share them with you. Mm -hmm. And you tell us which list hits home harder. This is very important. We need you as Canadians to vote. Mm -hmm. And we will count them properly, accurately, and quickly. Yeah, we promise to have the results within like two or three minutes to who the winner is. So, I always forget how we do this. Do I do all of mine at once? No, every time you do forget, we go back and forth and then we recap the list. Ranch flavored wheat crunch. Getting that 64 crayon box with the built-in sharpener. Ooh. The dream phone board game. The one where you'd find your fake boyfriend. Drawing your name on a frosty car window in the back seat and your dad being pissed about it. Getting bundled up for recess and tucking your snow pants into your boots to then realize you have a sock falling down. Great. Mall arcades. That one episode of Goosebumps where the dad keeps telling the kids to stay out of the basement and it turns out he's a plant? Waiting for a call on your see-through bedroom phone where the one where you can see all the wires in it? Yeah. Cool. That bead toy in the doctor's office waiting room, specifically the dentist. Why is the dentist Mm. taking so long? Which now with COVID seems extremely unsanitary. Were all the sick kids just touching these little beads? Ugh. 
And finally, my last one, the spiral staircase inside the bottom of the slide that some kid took a dump in once. <laughs> okay, that I cannot relate with that. <laughs> But I was also scared of slides. Okay, so let's spitfire our lists real quick. Here's mine. Please vote for me. Ranch Wheat Crunch, Dream Phone, Board Game, Bundled Up for Recess, Tucking in Your Snow Pants and Your Socks Falling Down, Stay Out of the Basement, Episode of Goosebumps, and The Bead Toy in the Waiting Room at the Dentist. 64, Crayon Box with Built-In Sharpener, Drawing Your Name on the Frosty Car Window, Mall Arcades, Your See-Through Bedroom Phone, and the spiral staircase inside the bottom of the slide that some kid took a dump in once. I can't Seven. believe that's a memory you have from your childhood. Just tabulating the votes and it didn't take long to realize I ran away with it this week. Which is unbelievable because a lot of people are saying the Ranch Wheat Crunch should have won it for me. One person. So what do you think it is about your list that really brought people back? Because it seems like a lot of people saw a dump in... A water slide? No, not a water slide. Well, where where like was this? A playground rocket oh. slide. Oh. Where the spiral staircase okay. is inside, and then the, the slide goes all the way around the outside of the casing. So this is a common thing that children did in elementary? That's just where they went to the washroom? There were always human dumps in it, and it made no sense. So earlier you played a song that sounds like... Donald Trump. Yeah, thank God for Donald Trump. It's called Bass Da Da Da, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. it was a viral TikTok video. Here it is one more time. All right. So it does sound like thank God for Donald Trump. Once you put that in your head, yes. Now, there's uh, another song that you know of, likely. TIs, whatever you like. Ooh, that's and a, a good one. Part of that song sounds like it was tailored to support Joe Biden. So this <laughs> is the song. I uh, just listened back to that to record the specific part. The song was a jam. It's so good, but like, where's the Joe Biden part? I didn't hear it. Here it is. Ready? Oh, okay. heard lyric. Yeah, totally. Let's hear it one more time. It's yeah. the second time he says it specifically okay. that it sounds like it. <laughs> it reminds me of every time I'd hear I'm a Slave for You by Britney Spears. Mm. I never knew what she was saying. The part where she's like, and I'm a name and nays. And in my mind, I'm like, is she talking about mayonnaise? <laughs> What is she actually saying in that part? <laughs> that would be a strange thing to bring so up in random. a song about being a slave for you. Is and I'm a name and nays. <laughs> Your mayonnaise? That's that mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's 780 784 7107. We're going to do a little round of misheard lyrics. Hit us up. So, uh, this text is really funny from Becky. She said, It's funny that you guys are talking about misheard lyrics because my brother used to gather up all my dolls from my room and then throw them out the door and sing, Who Let the Dolls Out? Oh, that's good. Who, who, who growing up. So, I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Becky. One of my favorites is Rihanna's uh, We Found Love in a... What was the, what's the actual lyric? Uh, we, we found, found love, love in, in a, a hopeless place. But I hear, I threw mud in a horse's face. There's another one about horses coming up here in a second. Perfect. Okay, so let's start with Stacy's text. Sean Mendez, his song Stitches, I always hear, which makes me sound really immature, farting on my knees. You watch me beat it till I can't be. It doesn't sound like falling at all. No, farting onto his knees Sorry, for Sean. sure. Uh, next up. Bree said, when I hear Imagine Dragons thunder, the whole time all I hear is fun dip. I was lightning before the thunder. Thunder, 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 thunder. That's a good one. I actually ate fun dip last week and I was so sick after. 10 out of 10 do not recommend eating that in your 30s. How did we eat that as children and feel okay after? How did our parents let us get away with the sugar intake we were allowed when we were younger? It's insane to me. Like, my parents would let me have a couple big Slurpees a day. No wonder I had little <laughs> boy boobies. Ryder, well, that's I was not a why little... you had boy boobies. Yes, it was. My sugar intake was insane. Of course I was chubby. I had no chance. Next. 
Okay. Erin made me laugh out loud with this one. Whenever she hears Empire State of Mind on our station, she hears Wet Dream Tomato. What dreams are made of? Is what that what dreams it? are made oh, of? What dreams are That's made of? So okay. good. And this last one we're going to get to is Janice. When she hears Old Town Road, she pictures take my horse to the hotel room, which would be very strange if someone actually did that. Here we go. <laughs> Ma'am, you can't be bringing a horse into your hotel room. I'm sorry. He'll have to be tied up outside. Play 107, Ryder and Lisa. Interesting story about that song is it can kind of be credited to Justin Bieber for getting really big. Him and Selena Gomez. So they were driving. Yeah, and they heard it on a radio station in Ontario. Uh Uh-huh. And it was like, new artist alert. What do you guys think of this song? Spotlight. One One of those segments. And uh, they recorded themselves like jamming out to it and posted it online, and it absolutely blew up. Like, what song is that? And it's so catchy that immediately it got traction and ended up going number one. Yeah, and now Carly Rae Jepsen is, I think she's killing it. I mean, she's the singer for Fuller House's theme song. So <laughs> if that's a sign of success, that's great I for mean, her. I don't think she's had any notable no. success since oh, that song. She had a couple okay tracks. She did just put out a Christmas song called "It's Not Christmas Unless I'm Crying" or okay. "Someone's Crying." Sounds fun. Sounds relatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a shout out for us. What's going on? Just wanted to give a shout out to my amazing, beautiful girlfriend and her brother. They just got back from Nova Scotia for four months. Okay. What's her name? Uh, Her name is Danielle, and her brother's name is Jordan. Wait a minute. My girlfriend's name is Danielle, and her brother's name is Jordan, and they just got back from Nova Scotia. Doubt it. (laughs) (laughs) We've had quite a predicament around here. There is a toonie that has just been sitting on the radio station counter. For like four days. For four, at least. And nobody's taking it. Hannah, who does the show after us, was like, hey, Ryder, is this your toonie? Take it. And I was like, it's not mine. And she's like, well, I'm not taking it. It's bad karma. So everybody's just left it. Uh So I have taken the toonie now, and I went and got two loonies with it. I'm going to give you one of the loonies, and I'm going to keep the other one. For the record, I did put out a Twitter poll asking if we can take it now that it's been sitting there for X amount of time. And with an alarming 93%, 500 people voted. They said, use it, take it, including a local cop. Recount. There was a cop that responded and they said, it's yours. Go get some Doritos. Okay. Well, then I think you got the green light. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to take my loony and I'll be right back. Okay. We have a vending machine. I don't know what you're going to do with yours, but. No problem. Good luck. All right. Pick something good. Uh, wait for her to leave here. Okay. My plan is. I'm going to put the loony back with this note I've written that says, I don't know whose toonie uh, was left here, but I'm sorry to report that half of it has been stolen by Lisa. Please claim the other half before it goes missing, likely by her again. And what I'm going to do is leave it here for a couple days. And if it's not claimed by then, I'm going to put the loony in a poppy donation box just so I have really good karma. And Lisa has terrible karma this week. She's coming back. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. What'd you get? Ugh. Can't get anything. Everything is at least $1.25. Oh. Talk about inflammation. Wait, no, no that's not the word. Well, you Infl- got s- sore ankles? No, infl- you don't want to walk back there again? <laughs> Inflation. Inflation, yeah. Okay, anyway, so I guess I can't get something from the vending machine. Well, there's a, I think there's a quarter over there, actually. What? Yeah. See how that works out for you. All right, check back. Here in the what next are you doing with days. yours? Uh, d- nothing. Lori, also known as Ann Becky, mainly because people don't know how to pronounce her last name properly. I know it. L- Laughlin? Laughlin. That <laughs> <laughs> sounded like a cough of some sort. And Laughlin. just like no confidence at all whatsoever when saying it. You <laughs> yeah. kind of just trail off. 
But uh, she has been in prison now for five days, medium security, and apparently she's having a really rough time because of it. Now she's in there because of the college admission scandal where she paid a bribe up to half a million dollars to guarantee her daughter to get into the University of Southern California. And it wasn't just her. It was her and her husband combined. Mm-hmm. He's also in prison. Uh, she's tried her best to be brave and look at the end result. Uh, but there was nothing that could despair her fears that something could go wrong and she could end up in there longer. Right. Whether it's more legal battles on the outside or like defending yourself on the inside. Listen, I get it. I spent some time behind bars and it's a scary place. Ryder, you were in the drunk tank for like four hours. That doesn't count. That counts. No, it doesn't. It's dangerous in there. I was the only one there, but... (laughs) Yeah, that sounds really dangerous. Thank God, because I was ready to go up to the biggest guy there and... Uh, Demand that you take his pudding. (laughs) How does it work? You go up to them in the cafeteria? Punch him square in the face. No, you go up to them and you demand that they give you the best thing on their cafeteria plate. Isn't that what you do? Sure, that would work. I don't know. I, I don't wasn't know there. I wasn't there long enough for a meal, but uh, we asked you at seven eight zero seven eight four seven one zero seven if you've ever spent time behind bars and if you had any tips. I found this really interesting. You have to assume everyone's innocent. You'll have a way easier time in jail if you do that. Okay. No one tells the truth about why why they're in. So just. Don't push for information is my suggestion. That's okay, an but pe- people will find out why you're actually in there, though, because the guards know. And then if you get buddy buddy with a guard, they'll tell you, oh, that guy's in there here for this. Well, yeah, that's but- just what I guess. I saw it in a show once. <laughs> okay. The closest I've ever been to jail was I dropped beef jerky off at like a local police station because they did something nice in the community. And I just left it outside the door because I was too scared to go in. I was like, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I'm not. I'm not here for anything specific. Uh, I had a buddy who actually spent some time in, and uh, he ended up being very well protected because he was a super good hockey player. So he got drafted <laughs> on their team. to one of the team and was like the leading scorer for the four months. Four months he was in like high security prison. Okay, before getting moved, but literally he was protected because they were about to go into playoffs, and they wanted him protected for the team. Which I just found super interesting. Okay, so we did just get a text from Chris that said, no, Lisa, you will never be buddy-buddy with a guard. That's how you get beat up. Okay, so maybe I did see it in a TV show once. Sorry, You're going to be just like Aunt Becky getting in trouble (laughs) because you don't know a thing. I know. Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.